Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and today I'm going to show you how to cut my new Hobonichi size envelopes using Cricut Design Space. Now, I've been asked to do some Cricut tutorials. I'm not really going to dig deep and do a full tutorial today, but I am going to show you how to upload the SVGs from the Hobonichi envelopes and work with them in Cricut's design space. The difference between Cricut and Silhouette is that Cricut software is actually browser based, so it's on your it's in your browser. You have to go to a website and open it. So if you have a Cricut, you probably already know all of this. Um, I'm going to start from the place of you've already logged into your Cricut design space and you have a new canvas ready to go. So I've already clicked on new, got my canvas here as you can see. And what I'm gonna do first is go and upload my SVG files. So if you purchase this envelope from my shop, you'd have an, a, access to the SVG, the studio file, and a PDF file if you wanna cut them manually. For Cricut, we are going to use the SVG file. So I'm gonna go to upload. And then you can see some of the other images or SVG files that I've uploaded previously. And I've already uploaded these two envelopes, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. So you go to Upload Image, and then you're just going to click on Browse to go through your computer and find what you're looking for. So I happen to already be in my folder, so I'm going to choose the SVG document. And I'm going to open. Now, this uh, envelope comes with two versions. It comes with a coin style envelope and then just the basic plain envelope, which is typically the style that I make. And so here, the, the image is, part, is showing you what the image is. It's asking you to give it a name, and you can put tags in. And I suggest that you do that to help you if you need to search for whatever image you're looking for. And then you can just hit save. And that's it. So the image is there. Now I've already got my image. So I'm going to go back to upload. And in this case, I'm not actually uploading the image. I'm just looking for the image that I want to cut. And I want to start with the basic envelope. So I'm just going to click on it here. And then I'm going to go to insert image in the lower right hand corner. So what that does is pull this into my canvas area and now I can go and save it and give it a name, but I've already saved these, so I'm not gonna save this again, and give it a name and get busy. So let me go to my projects and open the one that I've already saved. So we can work with that, I wanna have too many on here. Oops. Let's go. So I'm going to projects and it's asking me do I want to save the other one or do I want to replace it and I'm just going to replace what I had there. Okay. So this is the Hobonichi envelope or the Hobonichi size envelope. This is the basic. And basically I've put my SVG on my canvas. Everything is already ready to go. All I have to do is click make it, and then it comes up to this preparation window. And if everything over here is correct, um, let's see. I'm going to use eight and a half by 11 paper, so I need to adjust that. And I'm gonna scoot this down a little bit so that it's not so close to the edge of the paper. And let's see if I might wanna rotate it. No, it's not going to make any difference. So I'm just going to leave it as is. And if I don't know if you can see that, but there is a red line um, around the material size that's slightly smaller than 8.5 by 11. So I'm just trying to make sure that everything is, is inside of that red line. Okay, so I think I'm ready. So 
I'm just going to go to continue. Now it's waiting to connect to my machine. And I don't know, for some reason lately, it's been taking a really long time to connect to the machine with the Bluetooth setting. So I don't know. But anyway, so it's telling me to set my material. So at this point, what I would normally do is put my paper that I'm going to cut on my cutting mat and then I would choose cardstock for what I'm for what I'm doing because I am going to cut a piece of cardstock and then I'd load the mat into the machine and then I would just hit the go when it comes up So mine, it's already cut. I've loaded the machine. I hit the little cricket button to tell it to proceed and it cut my paper. So I'm coming back to the browser now and I'll hit finish. And then it's telling me not to forget to share my pro project, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna hit got it and keep it moving. So I've cut this one and now I'm just gonna hit save just to make sure I save it if I made any changes or anything like that. I'm gonna go back to my projects and I'm gonna choose the coin envelope and instead of going to customize because I don't need to customize it, it's already ready to go. I'm just going to hit make it. So it's going to take me to the preparation screen again, and I'm going to do, uh, huh, it's not letting me do eight and a half by 11. Is it because it's too big? Let's see if we turn it on the other direction. Will it let me do eight and a half by 11? I think it will. Let's see. No. Huh, it's not letting me change the material size. Okay, well, I don't know why it's not letting me change. Again, this is Cricut Design Space. I don't work in this often. So I'm just gonna leave it on 12 by 12. Just make sure that my design is within the eight and a half by 11 margins. I can actually scoot it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna hit continue and hope for the best. <laughs> okay, so apparently there's something wrong. So I'm just gonna reload this and try it again. And this, my friends, is why Cricut's design space is not <laughs> um, really my choice for cutting is just that the Cricut really cuts thicker materials better for me than my silhouette does so um again it's still not going to let me do that so i'm just going to leave this alone just scoot it down a little bit and try again and this i'll just make sure that i put my paper on the mat horizontally instead of vertically and just leave things as they are I'm going to wait to, for it to connect to the machine. Okay. So I'm going to do cardstock for my material. And I'm going to load my mat. Okay, so the mat is loaded. And so now it's just telling me to press the flash and go button on my machine, which looks like this. And then it will start going. it's finished cutting and it's telling me to unload mat. Once I peeled off the cut pieces, this is what I have.
So I just click finish here. And got it. Make sure it's saved. It is. And I'm done. So I can log out or just close my browser. Well, I suggest that you log out, sign out, and then we're done. Okay, so now let's move on to putting these together. Now there are several ways you can do this. I'm going to go ahead and score these, do my folds, and add the adhesive. If you're cutting them manually, you would print out the PDF, which is this. Now you can print this out and I printed it on cardstock, by the way, and then cut it out and use what you cut out to trace on another sheet of paper and use like use this as a template. You could laminate this, cut it out, use it as a template if you plan to use it a lot. Another option is to actually print this on your pattern paper. So you would put your pattern paper into the printer and print this design on your print pattern paper. When your pattern paper comes out, all you got to do is cut around the edges, cut this opening, and fold where the little dashed lines are. So that's totally up to you how you do it, but I do include these templates that you can use to cut these out manually if you don't have a digital cutter. Okay, so I'm going to get my scoreboard. You don't need a scoreboard to do this. You can just use a ruler as a hard edge to fold your paper up against. You can use your paper trimmer, the opening in your paper trimmer to score with this little area here. But I like the way that the scoreboard works best, so that's what I'm going to do. Now... I'm going to start with this one. This is the coin style envelope. And I'm making sure I have everything butted up flush against the top and the side. This bottom flap, this is the bottom. The smaller flap is the bottom. The bigger flap is the top. I'm going to score this one at 3 quarters inch. And once you put it on your scoreboard, you'll see where the corner of the flap and of each flap meets. So where those meet, that's where we need to score. And that is at three quarters of an inch. So I'm scoring at three quarters of an inch. And then here, if I leave it on here in this direction, it's going to be at seven and a half inches. Then I'm going to turn it, make sure everything is flush. And I'm going to score at one and seven eighths. Okay. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to score this one at one and seven eighths. So that one's done. Now I'm just going to fold my flaps. Burnish my folds so I get a nice clean fold. So when I add my adhesive, I'm going to adhere these two large flaps first, there. Then I'm going to do this bottom flap. This one stays open. You could use a small piece of Velcro if you want this to stay closed. I didn't do it with a closure because of the way the back flap is. And I figured um, if you really wanted to have a closure, you Velcro would be the ideal in this instance, or you could do one of those string closures, and I may come back and show how to do that. But for now, that's how that one is um, scored and folded. Now this one is the basic envelope, and as usual, let's turn it this way. I'm going to make sure everything is butted up against the edges. And I'm going to score these side flaps at a half an inch. So that one's one half, this one will be seven and one quarter. Or if you flipped it around, it would just be at a half an inch. So for the top flap, I'm gonna score at one and three quarters. Then I'm gonna come over and score at four and three quarters. Okay. Then I'm going to 
do my folds and burnish. Okay, so everything is burnished, folded neatly. Once it's put together, and then make sure that our tuck works. So you can just tuck it into the opening. And so these should be the same size, which they are. So now let's put our adhesive on. I'm gonna use a wet adhesive because that's what I have handy. On this basic envelope, the only place we need adhesive is here and here. Okay, I'm using the Art Glitter Glue. Okay, and I'm just going to put a light coating on the tabs. Not too much because I don't want it to seep out and make a mess. <laughs> and then just fold this up. And that's it for this one. It's ready to go. Just burnish that glue down. Make sure that we're not stuck closed on the inside. And this one's done and ready to go. Next, this one, where these two flaps overlap, it's about a half an inch. So what I suggest is just going, oh, take the lid off, is just going along this edge of whichever side you want to go over the other flap and I'm going to use this one to go over this one so I'm going to glue that down again you don't want to put too much glue because you don't want to glue the inside closed then for the bottom flap take the lid off and add a little glue down there and you can use the adhesive of your choice I just happen to have my art glitter glue right here close by. You can use um, double sided tape, anything you want. And again, you could use a paper clip to hold this closed. It just depends on how bulky you're willing to go. So you have two envelopes, two different styles that you can cut for your Hobonichi. And I want to show you how those fit in the Hobonichi. Here is my Hobonichi. Um, I showed this not long ago in a haul video, and I'll link that video here so that you can see what it looks like before I decorated it. But I have this clear cover on cover. It has a bit of a white pattern on it, so the white that you see is actually part of the clear cover. It has a design on it. This was gifted to me, so. And then what I did to hide the red of the actual color of the Hobonichi, I used the pattern paper again and put it in between the Hobonichi and the cover on cover. And so this is the look that it gives to my planner. Sorry about the glare. <laughs> okay, so I've already, these are some demo envelopes. These were my initial prints. So as you can see, they do hold cash. And they actually fit in here without hanging over the edge or anything like that. Um, if you have a cover on your Hobonichi, it will fit in the cover. So you don't have to worry about it falling out. See there how it fits nicely in there. There was a clear pocket that came with this. And I put it in the notebook before I got the clear cover. So there's actually a pocket under here. But this will also fit in that pocket. If you only have the clear pocket in your Hobonichi and it fits in the pocket of the cover on cover. Again, when you close it, it doesn't show. Same thing for the front. You can just slip it in to the front of your notebook. You can decorate these however you like. So being that this is part of the collection, I would probably use this envelope in here. 
and maybe put the die cuts on top of the envelope. It just all depends on what I'm using the envelope for. You have plenty of options. You can use it for cash, receipts, stickers, whatever you need. And again, they fit nicely in here. I'm going to take these two out since they don't match and put these in. And voila. Now, if you plan to put multiples, more than two, in your Hobonichi, I suggest using a thinner paper. I use just a regular cardstock to print these on and cut them. So, you could, might consider using a 32-pound paper if you wanted something um, a little more lightweight. But, yep, that's how they work. That's how they fit. So, I'll leave a link to the template and cut files for these Hobonichi size envelopes in the description box below if you haven't subscribed please hit that subscribe button and the little bell so that you receive notification each time I upload a new video if you have any comments or questions please leave them below thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later bye